Hi, I'm Gabby, and welcome to Gabby with Gabby. In this series, we sit down with fellow oil painters who brought their knowledge and talent to the world via the internet. It's a chance for them to put down their brushes, step away from their easels, and to talk about themselves. And it's also a great opportunity for all of us to get to know them on a deeper level. Our guest today is Steve. Steve, please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Steve McPhail. Uh, I'm an artist, wet on wet oil artist at Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, I currently paint live on TikTok almost every night at 930. And uh, I create a painting, uh, usually an 18 by 24, in about two hours uh, for a live audience. And uh, when I'm done, I'm done. I, I don't touch them after that. They get put away to dry. So uh, that's that's what I do. Uh, I've been painting for 114 days today. Uh, I started with no experience in, in any art other than music. Uh, I've never taken an art class. I've never had any sort of training, uh, never, uh, never painted prior to that. Uh, I just uh, was in a very rough place at the end of 2022. And I've always been a huge fan of Bob Ross because he, he he's a calming presence. Uh, so I would use Bob on the television to help calm me down. And my wife uh, decided that it, she would do one better. And she got me the Bob Ross paint set for Christmas this past year. Uh, you know, the brushes and the palette knives. And uh, I started and I said to myself, I, I completed my first painting. And I, I, it wasn't great, but I looked at it and I said, I can tell that that's a mountain and those are some trees and some water. And I just created that. And, and that gave me a, a drive. And so the next night I did another one. And then on day eight, I, I felt myself kind of flagging a bit. Like I, I, like I, I was feeling a, little, a lack of confidence in my abilities. And I felt myself reaching the point where I kind of wanted to quit. I kind of wanted to just say, okay, well, that was fun. I kind of learned how to do it. You know, I know basically what to do. Uh, and I thought to myself, what's a good way that I could make myself accountable? What's a good way that I could force myself to paint, even if I don't want to paint? Uh, I force myself to, to get the brushes in my hands, get the palette knives in my hands, and put paint on canvas and complete a painting, even if I've had a terrible day, even if my anxiety is at 150%, even if I'm even if I'm incredibly depressed to make myself do it. And I thought I, I do have a background in, in theater and, and speech and debate. And I thought to myself, I'm a natural entertainer. I'm a natural speaker. So why not do it live for the internet? Like, why not, why not just paint, spend a couple hours every night creating a painting uh, for, for, for the internet, for people to watch me and my learning process. And uh, so I did. I started live streaming it on TikTok. Uh, I tried YouTube and Facebook a couple of times, uh, but there's just never an audience. I would have zero viewers. And I thought to myself, this like this isn't holding me accountable. It's it's really not. Uh, so on day eight, I started live streaming on TikTok and I, I started about 1,200 followers and just steadily started growing from there uh, to the point now, 110 ish days in, uh, I'm at almost 15,000 followers. And this is just all organic growth. Uh, by people watching me paint live, uh, watching me uh, just explain my learning process to them. Uh, so I think that's a bit of a long intro, but uh, that's who I am. That's what you see here. Awesome. That is so fascinating um, and brave, you know, I've because I've, I told some other artists about you and I'm like, he's really brave to just there's no way I would have done that because my paintings were really bad at first. But, you know, I, I commend you for jumping on and finding a way to keep yourself um, accountable. I think that's really, really cool. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I never really had a, I never really have an issue too much with with being afraid of 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 putting myself out there like that. Because uh, as I said, that while I don't have a history of any sort in arts, like like visual arts, like painting or drawing or anything like that, I've never done any of that before. Uh, I have an extensive history in in uh, public speaking, being in front of crowds, uh, kind of making a fool of myself in front of people. Uh, so that 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 embarrassment that a lot of people would feel about having uh, you know a room full, an auditorium full of people, or the internet watching them do something, I don't feel that. It's just, it's, it's, that's like second nature to me. It's like, uh, you know, it's like watching some of these master painters, like, like I would say someone like you, uh, 
like I, I look at that and I'm like, wow, that's amazing. That's that's just like I just don't think I could do that. But really, it's the same. It's just experience and repetition and learning what to do and what not to do, uh, acknowledging your successes while learning from your mistakes. Uh, it's the same as it's the same as as painting, public speaking, music, crochet. It doesn't doesn't matter. Yeah, that's so awesome. Um, what do you do in the real world for work? Ah, I am a database administrator. Uh, I work at a Fortune 400 insurance company here in Omaha, and uh, I, I work on big data systems and cloud data systems, typically for uh, data analytics for everything from from rates uh, like insurance rates to customer analytics, things of that nature. Uh, I basically maintain those systems. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. One smart cookie, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, the military trained me to do that. Like I, I never went to college for that either. Like I have a minimal amount of, of higher education. Uh, I went to college in Mississippi for anthropology for a very short period of time after high school. Uh, but other than that, uh, yeah, that's the only that's the only higher education I have. Uh, the military trained me to do what I do now, and uh, I trained myself to do this. So, mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, do you have other hobbies outside of painting? I do. I kayak and I fish. Awesome. What do you like to fish for? I like freshwater fishing I'm in Nebraska, of course. Uh, so, but I like uh, lake fishing, some bass. Uh, I really like going out crappie fishing. Uh, because you can just yeah, I could just sit on my kayak and crappie fish all day, and it's just it's I'm not sitting there trying to hit a big bass or anything like that. I'm just I'm just fishing for crappie. I just set up next to a tree, like a down tree or something, and and just sit and fish, throw them back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you hit that right spot, and you can just pull them things fish. out all day long too. Oh, they're it's great. It's great. There's so many lakes here in Omaha. That's something that a lot of people don't know about Omaha. There's like nine really nice fishing lakes just like dotted around the city of Omaha. And uh, they're all no wake, so you don't have to worry about the boats uh, tipping you over if you're on a kayak. So yeah, I go out kayaking on all of them. It's it's phenomenal, it's great. That's really cool. And you know, I think um, when we live in a lake area, you kind of, um, sometimes people kind of take it for granted, you know, like me, I'm so, I within 10 miles of my house, we have 15, 20 lakes. So there's a ton of lakes and yeah. So I'm used to that. And then when you travel somewhere where there's just no lakes, it's almost bizarre. It, it really is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So I came from I came from the South Mississippi, Louisiana, and I grew up like on a lake in Mississippi. And yeah, I came to Nebraska. And at first I had I, I thought that it was just barren, like that there was no water. And then I, I started getting back into kayaking and looking around. I'm like, oh, there's like there's like a dozen ma little man made lakes all around me that are all just public access you could just go pull up and put your kayak in i had no idea uh so yeah it's it's pretty amazing pretty amazing here so they're man-made lakes that's interesting yeah yeah they're yeah they're all just yeah. like re reservoirs oh sure yeah sure yeah. cool that's so cool um you mentioned a little bit about the military do you want to tell mm -hmm. us what branch you were in and just a little bit about that sure yeah I, one second go for it <laughs> yeah uh i was in the u.s air force I joined in 2003 and uh, I, I went in uh, with an idea of what I wanted to do, but with my life in general, I was uh, 22 years old. I was kind of, uh, I was kind of aimless at that point in my life. I didn't really have any, any goals. Uh, so I thought to myself, I'm going to join the military. They'll train me to do something and then I'll just do that. Uh, so I went and I took the test that they make you take and they said, hey, we got a job for you. You can you can be a computer programmer. And I had no computer experience prior, really, other than a little bit of like word processor stuff in college and high school. Uh, so I thought, OK, yeah, sure, that'll work. You train me to do it. I'll do it. Uh, so I went in, went through basic training. It was a breeze for me. My dad was Air Force, so it was really easy for me to, to be be aware of what was coming when I was going into basic training. That was a breeze. Uh, tech school, which is the school where they train you to do what you're going to do. It's about four months. That was relatively easy. Uh, and then they sent me to Omaha, Nebraska and uh, spent seven years here being a database administrator uh, for uh, for the U.S. Air Force out of off Air Force Base. And then they sent me down to Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. And I worked down there as a database administrator for about two and a half years. Uh, and then I got out at my 10 year point and got a job at the University of Southern Mississippi. But that was my military service was was 
10 years of off at Air Force Base in Montgomery, Alabama. Awesome, and thank you for your service. Oh, thank you, thank you. I did I, I did do one deployment to Iraq while I was in. Uh, I went to Baghdad in what they called an ILO assignment. Um, I went over there for a few months to, to work in a post office in, in, uh, in the green zone, the international zone there in Baghdad. That's cool, awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So you have no art education. That was my next question. Mm -hmm. um, and no other art experience. You said you're into music a little bit, though. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm a bass guitar player. Uh, I've been off and on playing bass guitar since I was about 13 years old. OK, cool. Did you teach yourself to do that as well? I sure did. <laughs> yeah, I think there's two kinds of people in this world. You're either somebody who gets trained to do stuff or you teach yourself to do stuff. So I, I, yeah. I think you are correct. I think you are 100 percent correct. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. When you first started, what was easy for you? Nothing. None of it. Nothing. None of it was easy. It was everything was difficult. Yeah. Uh, like I, 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 I was teaching myself and going off of just kind of what I was gleaning from the internet and YouTube and 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 uh, other artists that I was watching. Uh, and and I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning. And I'm like, I bought a terrible easel. I bought a super lightweight easel and I was like, oh, this is not going to do it. And and so, yeah, it was just everything. Everything was a struggle. But the only thing that I would say maybe. I found kind of easy at first was. Um, the 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 liquid light layer, like like getting the right consistency, the right thickness uh, of that liquid white layer. Uh, I pretty much had that nailed down second or third painting. Uh, and I have one person to thank for that. Uh, it's not Bob Ross. It's not Bill Alexander. It is Diane Andre. Uh, she like her her videos. Watching Diane Andre's videos, she goes through such such uh, such good explanation of that that basics of putting on that liquid white layer and how to test it, how to make sure that it's good. Uh, that that's I think that's I think why that was sort of easy for me at first was I had uh, binge watched Diane Andre's videos. Uh, over and over and over and over again. Cool, that's awesome. And that's good because I feel like that's one of the biggest struggles that people have. So I'm going to have to check out this Diane Andre. And um, I'm always about sending people to places where they can learn things, you know, yeah. easily. And so I'll check her out, absolutely. Um, yeah. What was specifically difficult for you? Ooh, uh, I'm going to say uh, trees, uh, but I think specifically difficult for me at, at the beginning was getting the correct consistency of the underlying base paint, uh, like the thicker underlying, like when I'm putting down trees, uh, getting the, the the shadow colors down, the base paint down, and then getting the correct consistency and the correct brush technique to get the highlights on. Uh, that it was and continues to be to this day for me pretty difficult. Um, it is one of the things that I really work on the most uh, when I'm, when I'm, doing my painting, like I'm putting a lot of thought into that. Um, so yeah, that that probably getting the correct consistency of the thick to thin paint for highlights. Okay, okay. Um, is there anything outside of that that you're really still trying to learn? Uh, everything, everything, everything's a learning process. Uh, it, it, I, if, yeah, I, I don't think that, um, I don't think I would ever be necessarily satisfied with, uh, with my, uh, skill level in any particular aspect. Um, I, I come from my, my one of my previous hobbies was jujitsu before my body kind of started breaking down on me. Uh, and in that, it's really stressed that that even if you hit that black belt, even if you are even if you are at the top, you, you're still learning. Everybody is still learning in every aspect of, of what they do. And that's kind of how I approach art is, is I, I won't ever necessarily be at a point where I feel that I'm comfortable 100 percent with any anything that i'm doing mm -hmm. yeah definitely um do you think painting is going to be something you do for a short amount of time or do you think you're going to do it for a lifetime i'm going to do this for the rest of my life i maybe not like paint every night but i will be painting for the rest of my life uh this i i've i've i struggle with um with uh with ptsd and anxiety and depression and I have been treated by the VA. I have been treated by uh, civilian doctors. I've been treated with various medications and medication cocktails. 
Uh, I have never in my life found anything uh, that brings me the peace of creating art. That never in my life. I can sleep better after I've painted uh, than I've than I've been able to sleep in 25 years. That's awesome. <laughs> that, that almost made, I mean, that makes me feel emotional because I think that painting is so healing and I, I really do wish that more people who need it could find it. I really, really do. I, I, I agree. I agree uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, so many of the people that come and watch me uh, nightly are, are veterans or other guys like me uh, that that don't necessarily do what I do, but they have art as that outlet. They have art as that um, as that that's that ointment, that salve to put on those wounds that you can't see, you know? Yeah, um, just uh, kind of a random question. Have yeah. you ever rode a motorcycle? Have I ever rode a motorcycle? I have ever rode a motorcycle. Yes, I've ever rode a motorcycle <laughs> quite a few times. You have? Or yes, you have. Yeah. yeah, I so I, I ride motorcycle as well, and I I feel like there's there's some similar things, which as different as they are, you know, the concentration that you have to put into it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I asked. I that's the other thing that I kind of find peace from everything that I've been through yeah. in is, you know, riding. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that's that's sort of the that's sort of what I like about about uh, about kayaking is that whenever I'm out on the lake and I'm on the water, and I'm sitting there and it's just that constant motion. It's it's my full body is going into it and I'm just focused on going and looking and, 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 and pushing that kayak through the water. And it does, it gives you like a, it kind of quiets everything out and kind of focuses everything on the here and now. That's, that's yeah. what, that's exactly right. That's what painting does. You're right. That's exactly right. That's what painting does. It, it everything else kind of just gets fuzzy and then this is just crystal clear but yeah. then in the end you think about art is in the end you can hang something up on the wall and you can step back from it and you can see stuff into it and you can be proud of it and yeah. i think that's the, the extra layer that painting has it's a hundred percent like i said i've got a house full of art now and i walk around and i used to walk around my house and I just kind of had blank walls a couple things hanging up here and there and now i walk around my house and i'm like man that's I created all of that. <laughs> I, I I created all of that, all of these mountains, all these waterfalls. I did that. And it's it. Yeah, it's it, there's a satisfaction. There's a there's a sense of fulfillment and and peace that comes with that. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, who inspires you? Oh, so. Um, artistically or or like. Sure. Or so whatever, art, whatever it okay. is you want to give. So I will I will answer I will answer in two different ways. Um so artistically my my primary inspirations are as I've mentioned Diane Andre, uh Bob Ross. I watch a lot of Bob Ross. I don't necessarily uh I don't necessarily model my art after his really. Um but uh, I would say uh Diane Andre, Bob Ross, uh this might sound a little strange, but Lowell Spears, you may or may not know who Lowell Spears is. Uh, he was another student of Bill Alexander, uh, the guy that taught Bob Ross and Diane Andre. Uh, he primarily did florals, uh, but his explanation of, of color and how he, he blends the colors there on the canvas is, is phenomenal. I don't paint florals. I don't think I'm ever really gonna paint florals, but Lowell, Lowell Spears does a really good job of, of explaining that, the colors. Um, First and foremost, top of the list is Bill Alexander. Um, I, 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 the man speaks to me. Uh, I, there's something about his his delivery, something about his passion for the art. Uh, you know, Bob Bob is calming. Bob is a calming presence. Bill has a passion for it, and mm, that Bill Alexander is my number one. Uh, I love him. I absolutely love Bill Alexander. And um, I think a lot of people either don't really know about him or kind of mm -hmm. overlook him. And I always tell my husband, I'm like, you know, Bob Ross is cool. And I, I love Bob Ross because he reminds me yeah. of my dad. But every almost every phrase that Bob Ross uses was originally Bill Alexander. Yep. You know, came from Bill. And, and 
and Bill Alexander came from a real place. If if people don't know about this, I'll mm. just go into this really quickly. He was a Nazi soldier. He had been, yes, he had been um, drafted in to the Nazi army, and as soon as he could get out of Germany, he did, and he came to the United States, and and he, you know, like Monet, a little bit of Vincent Van Gogh had kind of done this wet-ish, wet-ish kind of thing, but Bill grabbed it and he made it and. You know, everybody's like, you know, we have to thank Bob. We have to thank Bill because yeah. none of us would be doing this without Bill. None no. of us. Yeah, you, no. If you if you listen to the the list of wet on wet artists that I just named as my inspirations, uh, Diane Andre, Bob Ross, Lowell Spears, uh, a couple more like Buck Paulson is another really good one. He's still around. Uh, Steve Ross, uh, Bram, uh, Bram is amazing. Uh, all of those people learn from Bill or from Bill's students. Because, uh, like you said, the cla- they did have classical painters and such had the a la prima technique. They did use wet paint on wet paint. But Bill really innovated using that liquid white, that wet undercoat to blend everything together. And he innovated the technique of the, the misted at the bottom mountains like this, the, the almighty mountain, as he called it. Uh, he really innovated that technique. Bob made it yeah. made it very famous, and he's the, he's mm-hmm. definitely the most well known wet on wet artist. But like you said, Bill is he's the the original he's the guy uh, and he has hundreds of episodes out there of his show uh and on his show he had guests just like bob did and that's where the diane andre episodes come from or from bill alexander's show uh most of the Lowell spears and buck paulson episodes come from uh the bill alexander episodes so mm-hmm. yeah uh what inspires you specifically what type of like landscapes and stuff do you see inspiring you uh, mountains. Uh, I love the mountains. I grew up in Mississippi and Louisiana and I'm living in Nebraska. <laughs> All these places, there's like no mountains. There's like notoriously bereft of mountains. Uh, so, so I love to go to the mountains. I love to go to Colorado and just spend time in the mountains, hiking and climbing and, and just looking around and, and seeing it, the majesty and the beauty of the mountains. There's like something magical about it. Uh, but I live in Omaha, so uh, I, I thought I thought I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint mountains because I really love mountains, and that's one of the things I love about watching Bob is 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 watching mountains come out of of a blank canvas. You know, watching him just create it. It's one of the things that drove me towards enjoying Bill so much is that uh, Bill is, is very mountain heavy. Uh, that's his technique. So his he, he does a lot of big majestic mountains. Uh, so that's really that's that's what inspires me is the mountains. Uh, it's very specifically, uh, Sapphire Point, uh, overlooking Lake Dillon, in uh, right outside of like Frisco, uh, Silverthorne Dillon area, Colorado. Cool. Um, I wonder if I'm the only person who's ever had this passing thought. I love to paint mountains as well, and I like one of my if I could just run away and go do whatever I wanted. Um, other than going and sitting on a beach and painting all the time, I would love to find some little town on a road that goes, you know, with a road that twists through the mountain somewhere mm. and just find a little old shack along the side of mm. the road and set up a little place to sell my paint and just sit out there and paint the mountains every day. That That is, that is, yeah, that's the dream, right? <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> that, is, that would be like just to be able to like just set up in the mountains and wake up and walk outside and paint uh although honestly um i'm gonna go out on a limb here this might this might be a hot take so prepare yourself um i don't i personally i don't work from like photo references or anything like that everything i paint is just straight out of my head onto the canvas i don't like i i think that maybe if i were doing that if i were just walking outside and painting the mountains that were around me i feel like perhaps my work would start to maybe get stale and that would worry Mm -hmm. me that, that I would I would start to kind of narrow in on just the kinds of mountains and the look of mountains that are around me. And uh, where, where I'm at now, I, I have the the I have the knowledge of the mountains that I have been in in the past in like the Pacific Northwest and Northern California and Colorado and of course Appalachians, which I haven't really done a lot of the, the more hilly mountains yet. But uh, I just use all of that to kind of form what I think the mountain should look like in my head. Uh, and I'm not saying that I would necessarily get stale doing that, but I feel like it would, 
No, no, I take it back. I'd 100% do it. No, I'd do it. 100%. I live on the side of the road in a, in a mountain town in Colorado. That's fine. I can yeah. look at pictures of other mountains. And you know what? You don't have to, because you don't have to paint what's around you. You know, I have yeah. people ask me that all the time. And every now and again, I do paint from a picture. But, you know, this is the reason that I paint landscapes. I always say because you can paint landscapes, screw them up all day long. Nobody will ever even know, right? And if you, you take it out it. of your head. And I, I'm like that. I'm like that, like you. It's like it, it comes out of my head and onto the canvas. Mm -hmm. I don't need to paint what's around me because then if it's not perfect, it'll drive me crazy anyway. Yep. But people driving through little touristy areas in Colorado would probably love a hand-painted oil painting, you know? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, they, they, they do. Uh, went to to Winter Park uh, area of, uh, of Colorado a couple weeks ago and just to hang out for a few days. And uh, there was a there was an artist there that has like an art slash wine place, and her art was everywhere, and it was acrylic landscapes. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's she has like a shop just set up in in the middle of this little town there. Uh, pretty cool. So yeah, there are people doing it. So the dream is yeah. alive. Right. That's so cool. Um, <clears throat> how long did it take before you felt like you were kind of familiar with oil paint, where it didn't feel completely foreign to you? Um, uh, honest, honestly, it uh, maybe maybe a few weeks. Uh, yeah. It never really it never really felt foreign to me because I didn't have any experience in anything else. Like I, I didn't I have no acrylics experience or drawing or anything like that. Um, so, and I do have experience painting like walls in houses yeah. a lot. Yeah. I've got a lot of like house painting experience. Um, and so like working with, with colors and such, uh, and paint really wasn't that foreign to me, uh, getting the appropriate, like thickness of the paint, like, uh, the first paints that I got were the little Bob Ross tubes and, uh, yeah. that was pretty good. But then after those ran out, which was pretty quick doing a painting a night, um, mm -hmm. I, I went and I was like, okay, well, I'm a new painter. I'm going to go, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to get cheap paint because I need cheap paint because I'm not good yet. Um, and and that that was kind of a struggle for me, nailing down the fact that that um, with like what what consistency, prep consistencies and such to get. But no, I wouldn't say it ever really felt foreign to me. It's all just like mixing mud together, you know, it's just playing in the mud, different color muds. Mm -hmm. um, what paint did you land on when you went and found some cheaper paints? Ooh, so uh, I went, I don't typically go to Hobby Lobby. Uh, I go to Blick or uh, or Michael's. Uh, we do have a Blick here in Omaha. It's great. I love it. Uh, so I, w I went with the, the Blick Studio Colors, which are, uh, one second. Ugh. These Blick Studio Colors. Yep. Uh, ooh, they're very, they're very juicy. They're very juicy paints. Uh, so if you want to if you want to use them, you got to kind of lay them out on cardboard a little while before you're going to paint, so they'll dry out a little bit. And I learned that 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 you can, like if I were to get this titanium white, the mountains they would just wouldn't come together. They just they wouldn't yeah. look right. They the, it wouldn't go on right. So I eventually settled on on my absolute favorite brand uh, is Windsor Newton Winton, the classic. <laughs> you can't beat it. I mean, I get I get that at Blick. The 200 milliliter tubes are $16 at Blick, so I can load up on those. Uh, I've had a few people that are that are uh, TikTok viewers and subscribers on TikTok um, get me uh, a couple tubes of paint through my Amazon wish list. So I, I don't have too big of an issue uh, staying in paints because, uh, like I said, with the Blick in town, being able to get the big tubes of Windsor Newton Winton for cheap, and then occasionally a subscriber or a viewer sending me a tube of paint. Uh, I've just stuck with the Windsor Newton Winton. I'll occasionally use the Gamblin, like the 1980 or the Gamblin artists. Uh, mm -hmm. If I want like an odd color or something like that, if I want to kind of bring in some, some different colors. Uh, occasionally I'll use Utrecht uh, Cad Yellow yeah. for my highlights because it's super juicy. Uh, but that's, well, there you go. That's the paint breakdown. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, I, I've made it this really strange mission actually um, to try as many different brands of oil paint as I can possibly get my hands on, mm. whether it's still made today or it's not. And um, so I've tried over 65 brands of oil paint. Uh. Uh, and which it's so fun. It's just some people are like, why would you do that? I'm like, it's just really fun. If you yeah. have a blick, 
Um, and if for anybody out there who's never been to a Blick, it's like dying and going to heaven. Um, <laughs> I love Blick. But at Blick, I want you to look at two tubes of paint, okay? Try to okay. remember this. One is an M. Graham, okay? They have them there. There's, at least in my Blick, they have like all the basic ones, and then they have another little section mm -hmm. further down with some even more expensive stuff. There's an M. Yeah. Graham. It's turquoise, and it's like a very transparent turquoise, and the color is phenomenal. Neat. Eat. And then the other paint that I want you to look at, and you might not be into pinks, but you just have to see the color for yourself, is it's uh, made by whole bean. It's a duo aqua, so it's a water mixable, uh, which mm -hmm. are not my favorite things in the world. But mm -hmm. it's called Luminous Opera. Luminous what? Opera. Like, oh, opera. Oh, luminous luminous opera. opera. Yeah. Huh. And it's an electric pink. It's really cool. You got to just go there and just look at the colors. They're, I'll they're check really it out. pretty. Something. I'll check it out. Yeah, I'm actually that. I'm actually going to be headed to Blick uh, probably shortly after we wrap this up because I am I'm out of solvent. That's where I purchase my solvents. So that's pretty much where and I purchase everything. I use Utrecht. Uh, hold on. I use Utrecht nude. Okay. Um, does that stuff have any odor at all? No, no. It's studio grade. It's like Gamsol. It's it's okay. There's nothing. Because I've went, I've went in there. All I use is Gamsol. Yeah, uh, it's comp, it, it's comparable to Gamsol. Uh, it's slightly cheaper, not yeah, like I think a it lot is. cheaper. I, yeah, it's it's it's. Sorry, I keep interrupting. You're me. right. I went in and I opened a thing of the Weber and I smelled it, and it stinks. It is not. It is not scent free. And so I didn't do yeah. that with the no odor. I almost did it. The N O O D, whatever you want to call it, the no odor. But yeah, um, yeah I, it, that stuff, it is expensive, but it's worth it, you know, to not have your house stink. Yeah. If you get the, uh, the, this Utrecht, the big ones like this, I think they're like something like 40 bucks, something like that at Blick. But uh, I, I, I'm very solvent cautious uh, when I paint. Yeah. So I don't, when I'm painting, I don't have like open solvent near me yeah. i don't yeah. i don't uh clean my brushes while i'm painting at all yeah. i just have as you can see just like lots of brushes yeah sure um so what i do is i just cycle through all my brushes and yeah. then i clean them at the end and i just use very small amounts of solvent and i reuse and then i take thursdays off thursdays like my my break night and on thursdays i'll take all my all my brushes and I'll take them upstairs and I got use the master's cleaner. Just clean them, clean them all, let them sit. Get the master's cleaner up in them a little bit up in the bristles and let them sit overnight. Clean them out in the mornings, let them dry out uh, throughout the day. And uh, so, yeah, I use very minimal solvents. Uh, like this, this gallon or whatever it is, half gallon of Utrecht, that'll last me uh, two weeks probably. Uh, and that's doing a painting a night. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's if it's if I'm cleaning my brushes a lot and I'm doing a lot of paintings that require a lot of cleaning. Uh, solvent's too expensive. It's too expensive. Yeah, it's it too is, expensive, yeah. especially this like the studio solvents, like the solvents you really want to use. Uh, oh. Yeah, that's too expensive. So expensive. Do you do you um, take your dirty solvent and then um, store it and let it settle out and then reuse it? Uh, sometimes uh, yeah. I do. Yeah, uh, sometimes. I have two buckets that I have. Uh, one is if if I sit and I use uh, I have a little little solvent can here, if I use that over and over again, and what's in there is really funky, I'll dump it in one bucket. And once that bucket gets about halfway full, I take it to the local like hazardous waste disposal place. It's like a mile down the road from my house. Super convenient. I just drop it off at them and they dispose of it. I have another bucket where uh, I have a smaller cleaning jar that I'll use to clean my fan brushes. Uh, that one, everything would usually settle out really good in that one, and I will pour that into the separate container, which is a, uh, it's just another Utrecht container like this. Uh, I'll siphon it off with a, a big, like, 300cc syringe, suck all the, suck all the thinner off the top, and put it into the Utrecht thing and reuse it occasionally. Uh, I find that it doesn't typically work quite as well the second time through, but what are you going to do, right? If you let it sit for a couple months, even that stuff that's really dirty, if it sits yeah. for a couple months in the container, it will complete. I mean, it, it'll really? it'll be kind of tinted, but yes, I yeah. I use every drop of my Gamsol until it's completely yeah. gone. But it sometimes right it has to sit for a while, so just something to keep yeah. in mind, I guess. But yeah. well, I haven't I haven't been painting long enough to let anything sit for a few months. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. No kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so outside of your painting, do you do any practice exercises or is everything that you do on camera? Everything I do is on camera. Wow, good for you. It's crazy. That's a, uh, what do they call that? Baptism by fire sort of way to learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean you know, it's, it's, it's like I tell my viewers what, every night when I'm, when I, like, it's you guys are going to succeed or fail along with me. You know, you guys are going to learn with me. Uh, I'm not teaching. I'm, I'm yeah. learning. And you guys are yeah. learning by watching me learn. Uh, yeah, I don't I, I make I make sure I let people know that, you know, I'm not trying to teach people. I'm just I'm just learning. You know, I'm not a master. I'm not I'm not. I'm just I'm just learning. And I find that that alleviates a little bit of the expectation uh you know for and and maybe gets rid of some of that some of that expectation that you would have of yourself for painting live in front of people i love that that's a great idea you know because there's so many people that are on you know channels and i love every single one of them um and they do like teaching you know like this you know come paint a picture with me and the reason that i actually don't do that is because there's so many other people and i love your concept because it's it's different you know it's like just just come along and you know watch me and relax it's not come along and pick apart what i'm doing and that's that's awesome that's a great yeah. way to do it so, yeah and yeah. and you know I'll, I'll quite often uh like take suggestions from people that are watching like if 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 people are like oh you're gonna put this in yeah you can put this in oh you should do this I'll, I'll i'll change up my painting on the fly uh and and i feel what it does is, is it's like you said it's it's giving people a place to come and hang out and relax mm -hmm. I usually have some some music on. Uh, I've been trying to stream from a, a laptop the last couple of nights. It's just not working. So I've gone back to using my regular device. Um, but yeah, I usually got some relatively chill music on and I'm just hanging out, painting, and everybody's just having a good time, you know, talking. And it's 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 not a it's not a real formal place. It's not super bright and, and in your face. Uh, I, a lot of a lot of creators out there that paint live will or will will sit and try and sell their work while they're painting or they will try and sell things while they're painting or on TikTok they'll sit and ask for donations or gifts or things like that. I don't do that. I don't sell my yeah. art. I, I don't sell I don't sell my art. I don't ask for donations. I don't ask for gifts. I don't ask for any of that. I will direct people to my to my link tree and I will say, you know, if you want, you can tip me or there's a there's an Amazon wish list, but like I don't paint for money. I don't I don't yeah. I don't you know, I don't paint to to I don't paint to sell the painting. I'm not creating a product. I'm making a piece of art. So yeah, that's how I see it. I, I love that. You know, um, I, I before we started, I told you that I've painted about fourteen hundred pieces mm -hmm. and I don't paint to sell my work either. I paint mostly 16 by 20s. Um, I do like art shows and I'm a reenactor. So I take my art with me. I paint and I sell um, mm -hmm. and I sell my 16 by 20s for 20 bucks. And people all the time are like, you need to charge more. I'm like, listen, yeah. I have five right now. I have almost 600 paintings at home, first of all. And it's like I sell them because I would sit out here and I would give my work away yep. because I have to sit out here and sell them. That's what I want to get paid for, not for doing my work, because I yeah. love painting. I paint. For me. I don't paint to sell my work. I paint for me. And I feel very kindredness to you in that way. Yeah. In a lot of ways, yeah. actually. So yeah. Yeah. that 20 bucks it covers the canvas and the paint. So that's You're right. Darn right that's it does. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's see, your live streams that you do. Do you record them or are they just kind of lost to the wind as you live stream? Uh typically, I mean they're they're TikTok holds a recording of it for 90 days. Uh, so the okay. vast majority of my live streams are still available for me to go out there and download. Uh, like everything from the past three months, basically. So everything except for the very beginning. Uh, but what I do is it's it's available out there for me to download. It's not available necessarily for people to go back and watch. Uh, so yeah. what I do is I, I download it and I, I take it and I, I shrink it down. And I cut out the the bits of me like doing my what I what I call what my viewers call an art parade, which is when I start pulling paintings out of my drying boxes and showing them to everybody. Because uh, I've got I've got just stacks of drying boxes over here uh, full of art. Sorry. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, what was I talking about? I forgot what I was talking about. 
<laughs> I do the same thing all the time. Um, it, recorded, recorded videos. Yes, and what I, I take them. I, I shrink them down. I cut out the art parade. And then I, uh, I turn it into like a time lapse with music over it. Uh, oh. and, and throw that out on TikTok. Uh, I'll typically also create like a little magic trick, which is like, yeah. uh, you've probably seen those. If you found me on Facebook, you've yeah. probably seen the magic tricks. Uh, yeah. I'll also do that because I find that, that creating two pieces of content uh, from each painting helps drive a little bit, a little bit more views, drive us a little bit more uh, engagement with my content. Uh, so yeah, that's that's really where the majority of my content's available is through the time lapse videos and the magic tricks. I don't typically put the time lapse videos on Facebook because uh, Facebook can't Facebook shorts don't they don't handle my time lapse videos well. So yeah. um, the reason I asked is because especially your early ones, there's going to come a day where you're going to want to look back at them. Not not for us, but for you mm -hmm. yourself. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. that's all that's so yeah and it's yeah. it's fun to be able to see you know your work from over your shoulder because you mm -hmm. you can see things in your picture that you don't see when you're up close to it so yeah yeah i uh i actually use one of the one of the reasons that i really liked using uh like TikTok and live streaming on TikTok is that the the feature where uh where it will allow you to like download it and really have a lot of uh flexibility with what you do with the finish with your live stream download yeah. after you're done with it um but one thing I loved about it is it, would, it gave me a good reference uh, that I could like look back at at my phone and that would give me a good view of what my painting looked like because yeah. uh, I'm like a foot, a foot, foot and a half away from it. So it all just looks like paint to me. Yeah. Uh, I have started the last few days. I have started painting standing up. Uh, yes. So the viewers have, have been, I think, a little mixed on it. I think it's a little less. Um, it's a little less of the intimates, shorter, smaller, enclosed setting as before, uh, but it allows me a little bit more extensibility, a little bit more move, maneuverability in my area here. Uh, yeah. Anyway, there you go. One thing that um, I came up with, and I don't know, I don't know where this came from. My brain goes in so many different directions. But one thing that I came up with is I tell people to take a mirror and put it behind them. Mm -hmm. So that they can turn and they can look at that mirror and see their work from a distance without having yeah. to like walk and forth. And I told one of my friends that and she's kind of into art stuff too. She goes, well, what you should do is you should put a mirror on the side of your easel and a mirror behind you. So you have a rear view mirror so you can just look in the rear view mirror. I'm like, so yep. far. <laughs> yep, that is a and, and actually if you do that, if you put a mirror on your easel and you put a mirror behind you, you get a double mirror image. So it actually shows here just like it shows here. Yeah, pretty. It, that's that's brilliant. That's not as cool. That's not that's that's yeah. That's that's pretty cool. That's I, I had never never would have thought about doing that. And honestly, might a mirror might reflect. Yeah. Oh, Go God, that's it. a that's a really good idea. Anyway, yeah. that's cool. I, all I did was all I did was put magnets on my easel. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know what the thing is like there's so many little things this is why i wanted to start a channel why i started writing a book because it's like hey you, you have to figure out some of the stuff by yourself and that sucks yeah. and so it's like if you can come up with these weird ideas and then you can pass them on to other people it's like i'm all about making people's lives easier so yeah well that's that's my tip to the world gabby is magnets yeah will hold everything they'll hold your palette knives they'll hold your brushes yeah magnets and they're sticky on the back right so yep. that you can like stick them to yep you want to get kind of yeah. you want to get kind of strong magnets like yeah. uh like the neodymium magnets work great that's these right here these strong magnets here yeah. uh but yeah get strong magnets they'll have a little adhesive on the back stick them on there brushes you know gonna... okay. <laughs> brushes and palette knives they stick great uh because you know the, the metal on the the, the ferrule yeah. or whatever it's called yeah. sticks yeah. perfect Keeps everything super close, super easy access. Yeah, uh, that's a yeah. great idea. I, sh I should do that because I have I have so many paintbrushes. That's a great idea. I'm going to do that. And you get a mirror. We'll, we'll trade ideas and we'll take up. I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And I use my camera for that, too, actually. How you talk about yeah. kind of looking back into it to be able to see it. I do that. And that's where the idea of the mirror actually came from was because mm -hmm. I was looking at my camera and I'm like, a great idea to have just a mirror back there if I didn't have a camera. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I love this. This yeah. is like innovative. Um, let's see. Uh, do you have any advice for anybody who's just getting started? Don't quit. Uh, 
the thing that I tell the people that watch me every night, the piece of advice that I tell people uh, that I feel personally is the most important is is learning is is a process. And in learning, you are going to you are going to make mistakes. And the classic line is learn from your mistakes, learn from your mistakes. And that's true. That is true. Learning from your mistakes is vitally important. But in my mind, equally as important is acknowledging your successes. If you look at a piece of art that you create and you hate 90% of it, but you like 10% of it, then look at that 10% and say, I did that right. I did that really well. That looks really good. Everything else looks bad. And I learned my lessons on those mistakes or those. I learned my lesson on that. I did really good on that, that little piece. And then slowly but surely, a little piece will pop up here that looks good. And then a piece will pop up here. And this piece will grow. And then eventually, you're seeing successes everywhere. You're, you're acknowledging and growing those successes as well as learning from your mistakes. Uh, that's, the, that's the advice I would give. Uh, if you only focus on your mistakes, if you only focus on learning from your failures, uh, you're going to get disgruntled. You're going to get you're going to get downtrodden, and you're not going to feel like you're doing a very good job. It's it's very important to to look at your successes and acknowledge your successes, and embrace the things that you did well, even if it's tiny, because that tiny thing will grow. That's my advice. Yeah, absolutely. I think too, you know, I have this wall in my living room. I hang pictures everywhere to dry, but I have this one wall in my living room. And if I have a piece that I either really don't like, or I really do like either way, I'll bring it upstairs and I'll hang it on this wall. And then I turn around and I walk away from it. And then I'll get a certain distance and I'll turn around and I look at it. And if I look at it and I still don't like it, I turn back around and I keep walking. And it's like, you know, you can have those things, but if you don't like it up close, keep walking away until you do, because at some point you're going to look at it and you're going to see it in a different light, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It may be, uh, it may be a far from good, but it may look good from afar. Hey, there you go. I love that. I love that. That's perfect. That's great. <laughs> That's so great. Um, let's see. Uh, my last question before I get into our bonus round is what does mm -hmm. painting mean to you? Uh, oh, Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, <laughs> It's really over the last few months. Um, it's become it's become my therapy. It has become my my social circle. It has become my medication. It has become uh, it mean it means peace. It, painting means painting means serenity to me. Yeah. That's a good word for it. That's a really good word for it. Okay. Let's go into your bonus round. <laughs> All right. Um, bonus question number one. What when you're when you're having your chats and stuff with um mm -hmm. your audience, is there anything that you find particularly interesting or little conversations that you really enjoy having that come out of that? Uh there is something that I find very interesting. And it's not necessarily uh, directly from from chats that are happening, but it's more from the demographic data that TikTok provides me. Um, yeah. I I have uh, I have a very weird demographic of, of of viewers for my lives. I have primarily people over the age of fifty five, uh, yeah. and in the United States. Uh, so it is. I have a large viewership of retired people, uh, people that are that are older that grew up watching Bill and Bob. Uh, and then there's like a gap. There's like a gap. And then I have people in like their 20s following me, mm -hmm. like their late teens and 20s. Um, these are people that are that are they're almost all artists, uh, like the younger people that follow me. Uh, and there are people getting into art or doing art and, and you know, some in art school or just out of art school or, or, or pursuing art in different ways, shapes or form. And that's that's pretty much that's the weirdest thing to me is that I have like these two groups of people that, that watch me and they're 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 polar opposites. Um, yeah. I don't like so in in my in my live streams, I don't 
we don't talk about politics or religion. We don't talk about any sort of divisive subjects, unless it's a beverage of, of, of some sort that I don't pers personally like on that day that I've tried. I will occasionally talk about beverages, uh, but like it's that's the, I like I try and just keep that, and I find that that really has brought together uh, people that normally in this world would not uh, be communicating and uh, talking uh, with each other in the way that they are. Uh, and I, I love that. I absolutely love it because I'm bringing I'm, I'm bringing people together. Uh, that's that's really my goal is to bring people together and and spread uh, spread my message, which is that anybody can create art. You don't have to be an artist. Uh, and that and that, you know, you can do that. You, it's like Bob said, you can do it. It's like Bill said, you, you can paint. We promise like that's you can do it. And and that's really what I try and push. And that's the it's I find it it's uniting for people. Of, of all different ages and, and and backgrounds and ideologies and it's uh, you know I have I, it's I have followers on TikTok from all over the world a uh, huge following in Brazil the artist community in Brazil huge following in the artist community in Italy uh, and it's just it's amazing uh, to to be exposed to all of these artists from all around the world and have them appreciate my artwork uh, so that's that's anyway that's really cool that's all. You know, the thing is, because we all started where you are, essentially, and to be able to watch somebody go through that development process, I think is really fascinating. So, yeah, I think a lot of people can relate to you. I know from the very first time I saw a, a little clip of one of your things, it was either on Facebook or YouTube or something. From that mm -hmm. very moment, I was like, that is so cool. And that's why I really wanted to interview you, because I was like, yeah. that would be so cool to be able to, you know, you know, talk to you about that process. Um, but I yeah. think a lot of people late because they've all been there. So yeah. Yeah. everybody has to start somewhere. Uh, yes. You know, Michelangelo didn't paint the Sistine Chapel on day one. Like, well, but he certainly did paint it. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Have you ever been there before? No, I haven't. No, no. Someday, someday get there and see it. It is. Yeah, awesome. it, that is that is bucket list. <laughs> that is bucket listed right there. No doubt about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, bonus question number two. All right. Did you have any doubters or haters, either in your personal life or online, that um, doubted or hated on you when you first started? Nope. Awesome. Good. That, nope. That's the uh, better answer. Nope. Everybody, uh, everybody has been super supportive. Um, my wife, very supportive. Uh, my family and, and friends on Facebook have been pretty supportive. Uh, the TikTok community, occasionally, you know, I'll get trolls come in, but I was in the military for 10 years and I grew up a, a little short dude in South Mississippi getting bullied through high school and, and middle school. So I can kind of take some online trolls. I'm fine. I'm 41 yeah. years old. I, they, they're new to this. These online trolls are new to it. I was born and I was bred. I, I came up in before online trolls as they were becoming a thing. So it does, that doesn't bother me. Uh, yeah. As far as like real people. No, yeah. nobody. Everyone oh. that everyone has been amazing. Everyone has been super supportive. Uh, that I was afraid. I would more than I was afraid of putting myself out there and painting live. The thing I was most afraid of was uh, the art communities on these platforms and in the world not accepting me because I am brand new. Because I am I never. I don't have any training. I don't have any of that. So I was afraid that I would be kind of like. Uh, uh, stay away from uh, what is this guy nope i was totally wrong uh the art community on tiktok has been phenomenal uh i've grown i have grown a group of people around me there that are that are genuine real artists and it's it's an amazing thing you know yeah awesome that's awesome um bonus question number three do you feel like you've improved over this little journey of yours uh, yeah, 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 uh, exponentially yeah. in every in every aspect. Yes. Yeah. Do you yeah, have? I, you still have... Go ahead. Oh, you do. Awesome. I knew what you yes. were going to ask. That yes. is my day. That is my day one painting. God, you know, uh, <laughs> I gotta say, <laughs> I uh, 
I felt like I did, you know, my first my first oil painting, I painted with acrylics. My first oil painting was better, better than anything I'd ever painted with um, acrylics. But I am consistently shocked at how much better other people's first paintings were than mine. That's that's not bad at all, actually. <laughs> yeah, that was that painting was was not really ever having painted before in any way, shape or form and just watching Bob and Bill and Diane and Lowell and Buck Paulson, basically watching Bill Alexander and all of his amazing students. Um, yeah, that was that's what got me that painting. And then from there, my second painting looked a little bit like that with some changes. And then it was just adding on and adding on by like my third or fourth painting. I was doing the the, the highlights on the mountains and mm, just off to the races from there. Yeah, you know, some people um, struggle more. I've taught a lot of people like individually, just little lessons and stuff. And some people struggle more, but I look at some people's work and you can tell from day one that they genuinely have a talent to begin with. You're definitely one of those people. You definitely have a talent for this. Well, I appreciate that. That means a lot coming from you. That really does. Yeah, absolutely. I mean it. Absolutely mean it. Um, I think we're about done. Do you have any final thoughts that you'd sort of like to share with the world? Uh, no, not really, other than come watch me paint uh, nightly at 9 30 uh, p.m. Central Time on TikTok. I uh, I try and I try and get a painting wrapped up in about two hours. I talk in a chat with my viewers. I dispense sometimes maybe questionable life advice. I, uh, you know, it's just a good time. We listen to music, we have fun, uh, and uh, don't don't stop creating. Uh, if you're if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, don't stop creating. Uh, go out there and make something beautiful. Take the constituent parts and put them together. Make something that didn't exist before that is beautiful, and uh, you've made the world a better place. Absolutely. Um, where can people find you specifically? Um, we'll start with TikTok. Uh, my TikTok is McFizzle66, M-C-P-H-I-Z-Z-L-E-66. You search for me pretty much anywhere on the internet, you can find me that. That's 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 been my internet identity since like 1996. So I got McFizzle66 pretty much locked down. So you search for me on uh, TikTok, you can find me McFizzle66. Uh, I'm not really on other platforms too terribly much. Uh, find me on Facebook as well, Steve McPhail. Um, you'll see my shorts and such there. Uh, YouTube also McFizzle66. I don't do Instagram, not too terribly much of a fan. Uh, I do post pictures of my completed work on Instagram, uh, and you can find me there at McPhail, M C P H A I L 492. Awesome. And I'll have that stuff in the description yeah. and at the end of the video too, so that everybody can see that. Awesome. Um, thank you a million for coming on and doing this with me. This has been really, really fun. Well, I, I enjoyed myself as well. There was a fantastic conversation, Gabby. And, uh, you know, it, I, it, I feel like I did at, do after I after I do a painting. I was anxious before I started. I was anxious. I was kind of nervous. And then we started talking and it, it started coming together. And now we've got this beautiful hour and 15 minute work of art now. Look at that. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I Eventually, I plan on doing some follow up interviews. So. Um, you can keep that in mind if you ever decide that you want to come back on with me again. I will probably hit you up and see how you are in the future. So yeah, yeah. well, I am I am always here. If you ever want to talk, shoot me a message. You know where to find me. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, thanks guys for watching. Uh, make sure that you guys go to his TikTok if you do TikTok. Um, whether you do that or not, still find him on YouTube. Um, he has some little stuff so you can see little bits of stuff and um, give him the support. He is really great and. Um, letting all of us into his journey is something that most people wouldn't do. Uh, I don't think most people are brave enough to do that. So again, I commend you for that. And again, I thank you very much for coming on. Um, make sure that you guys um, like this video and just uh, get involved with the community and take his advice. I think that he's got some really good advice. Until next time, I really do hope that you guys fall in love with oil painting and art as much as we have. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.